Are we there? I'm here. I'm I'm here. You're there. Oh and you guys are here. Oh my god. It's like cool, man. Ah. So, good evening. Welcome to another fun night of talking about why the world sucks. Buenos días y bienvenidos a otra noche donde vamos a hablar porque el mundo el saco. <laughs> el mundo el saco. I like that. There should be a t-shirt like that, man. That's not even a Spanish word. I but it isn't, but you did so well. You, yeah, I mean, I was, I was believing, I was buying it. Yeah, maybe. So, tonight, maybe. tonight, 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 we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. Tacos? And, and, and tacos might be it. We might get into chicken ranch farming. We just don't know. But we're joined tonight. It's You've got Arnaldo and John. We're going to talk about these important things that are going to make the world a little bit safer for you after we're done. Absolutely. So maybe some school dance tips, like don't go up to the students and be like, hey, want to screw? Because that's really inappropriate. I don't know. You know, it's always kind of fun. So, Oh, and we're going to offend Canada at some point today. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's <laughs> Yeah, we haven't even gotten that far. So Arnaldo, let's, let's kind of give a recap. It's been a little while um, since last time we talked. We, we both uh, have, have been to Vegas for different events. Absolutely. So let's, let's start in a little bit. Yeah, you were down for the, the Las Vegas um, uh, DJ convention, the Mobile Beach show. Mm -hmm. Give us your opinion on the show. Oh, man. Oh, man. And the question becomes is, do we give the nice guy opinion or do we give the... <laughs> no, first of all, real quick, uh, just if you guys uh, have kids in the room... You might want to put your headphones on. Yes, that's a probably a good idea because Arnoldo says darn. Yeah, I do. I do say darn and poppycock and shit. So, which is going to describe exactly how I felt about several things, but not directly, for the most part, Mobile Beat's fault. Um, the content was there as compared, I think, to a few years. You know, Mobile Beat has gotten better by getting better and better speakers. And then there's Ted DiBiase. What the hell? Look. I don't get it. He's a nice guy. I mean, he yep. is. He's a nice guy. Um, he had a few nuggets the first time, but really? Really? Like, and I'm, I'm not the only one that shares this sentiment. I'm like, really, dude? Like, you got freaking Jason freaking Jani opening up, and you could have said, hey, Jason, why don't you do the Brand of You seminar, which a lot of people asked about, and I missed that one. He did it at Expo. That is the only good thing DJ Expo has ever had because we all know that DJ Expo seminars are garbage other than mine. Uh, and, also, <laughs> and even then, mine just aren't as good of a quality at DJ Expo, mostly because, oh, no, I'm just kidding. But in all seriousness, like the seminars at DJ Expo really aren't all that great. That's not a secret. A lot of people have witched about that. But here comes Jason Jana with the brand new used seminar, the one seminar I haven't seen, and there's apparently no video of it anywhere. It's it's like that uh, Shazam movie, not the Kazam with Shaquille O'Neal, but the one with Sinbad that nobody – has ever seen it, but everybody yeah, yeah exactly everyone yeah, knows okay. it existed but they won't ex they want uh, no. yeah. so so Moby could have gone up and said Jason you really should do this you know seminar so many people are asking for it and Jason might have said yeah I'll do it or yeah. like no, I'm already doing too much no instead we got Ted DB I'm like why so, Why? So for those of you who do not know, Ted DiBiase was the million dollar man in the WWF, WWE, WCW, a wrestler. And he is, was very popular as the heel, which would be the bad guy uh, in that, that uh, wrestling realm. He had uh, you know, alcohol addictions, drug addictions, sex addictions, what have you. Now I get why he's at a DJ convention. Oh, okay. He's turned his life around, and now he goes around, and he is into a ministry. This is a ministry for him, going to these shows. So generally, he does two seminars, which he did at Mobile Beat once again. One of them is a business, kind of a sales one, we're going to call it whatever. And then he does his testimonial, which if you're in a Christian circles or in that religious circles, you probably understand what the testimonial time is. And he gets up there and does his thing. Now, with that being said, Arnaldo, what, how many years ago was he there? Four years ago, five years ago, you think the last time? Actually, I think three, yeah, three, four years ago. Um, that's all I remember. I can't remember too much. I saw the first one and I'm like, okay, I don't understand why uh, he's here, but, 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 but what I will give him props on, yeah, and yes, he got preachy on one seminar, which, you know, even as a Christian, I'm like, why? Why? Like, all you're doing is just pissing off a bunch of DJs. They're all like, I know Jesus, blah, 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 you know. Uh, 
I, I never understood that part. But at least in his first seminar, at least he actually, even though he told some life stories, you know, he tried applying some business and all that. But then you have, hey, let's re- bring a really high profile. And this isn't just Moby. This is every DJ convention. Let's bring in a high profile speaker and uh, just let him talk about his life. No, dude, I don't care. I don't care if I'm going to sit here and listen to 45 minutes to an hour of you talking and I paid to be here to listen to 45 minutes to an hour of you talking. I don't want to hear your life story. I don't want to hear uh, unless your life story can tell me directly how I can make money with your life story. No, I don't want to know at all. No one's ever going to uh, let me pick on Scribble for a second because I, I like Scribble. Huge fan of his music. I, I think he is one of the better DJs out there. And Scribble Summit, I was just him telling his life story, and then it was a Q&A session. I'm like, really, guy? Really? Like, no, 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 no. And, and, and so many DJs have done this, and I absolutely freaking hate it. If you're going to bring a DJ in and then just sit down and do a Q&A, stop it. Just stop it. If the person was so freaking lazy they couldn't actually get a seminar put together, then they shouldn't be a seminar speaker. And if you're not letting them put together a seminar because you want to do a Q&A session, that is not a freaking seminar. That's a panel, and nobody wants to pay to go see a freaking panel. That's ridiculous. Although that the panel idea, it, it surprised me. I've gone to some higher end events where they're charging a thousand dollars plus a ticket, and I agree with you. I'm not, I don't want to go there and sit there and have a panel where people are basically answering questions off the cuff. Although I might learn something. Yeah, I, it's not what I'm I'm there for yet. I'm I'm paying a thousand dollars to go sit at this one convention on social media, and there they are. There's you know four whatever, whatever, whatever of their companies that are up there answering questions. Generally, that's nice that usually one of them knows what the hell they're talking about and the other two are just kind of there for eye candy, although not many of them are that attractive when you're in a tech world. But you're getting something, but it's not, I would rather have, you know, someone like, you know, the CEO who's who's turned a company made a bazillion dollars on the internet. Tell me, how they did that? What? What? And then they can give me their life story and say, you know what? This is what happened, and this is where I came up with the idea, and this is where you can come up with an idea too. Exactly. That makes sense to me. The idea, exactly. the idea of of being, you know, the wrestler and saying, you know, this is this is what happened. This is what happened. Say, like, great, boy, that will teach me not to be a wrestler. Okay, DJ Expo when they had Little John, right? Yeah. Uh, first of all, guys, I don't care if you like Little John's music or not. This dude is true and true to business, man. I he, just, yeah. Yeah. Really. You get a chance to sit down and talk to him. This guy is all business and he is insanely smart. You know, when MySpace was a thing back in the day, you know, dude built his own profiles, dude built his own website. You know, he did a lot of his videos. Like the guy is a visionary when it came to his business. He knew where he wanted to be and how to get there. And now John can do whatever the hell he wants because he's little John. You could have asked this guy anything, any question. Hey, you know, I have a question. How were you able to, you know, maybe manage your business and doing your web work. Why did you choose to do some of the great questions? Instead, here comes Potato DJ. Can I get a selfie with you? No, you idiot. Freaking A. Come on. Come on. And little John, thank God the dude's like, fuck your selfie. Or excuse me, fuck your selfie. Yeah. Okay. Like, no, no, <laughs> no. Here you have one of the greatest business mind of a particular genre, somebody that invented their own genre, that invented their own style, that whatever music he decides to choose, it becomes a hit instantly. And your question to him is, can you get a selfie? Listen, you potato, get the hell off the microphone and let somebody with an actual business question answer. But in reality, all DJs and most all people think like that. Q&A sessions at, at trade shows are just the stupidest thing ever, unless it's after a seminar. Hey, do you have any questions about the seminar? And I, I've made the mistake of doing Q&A directly after my seminar. And I didn't say, do you have any questions regarding the seminar? Yeah. People ask me things that are completely irrelevant. I'm like, really, guy? Just ask something else. <sighs> potato DJs. Can that be a hashtag? Can we all just start using hashtag potato, potato DJ? DJs? Potato DJ is just absolutely stupid. And I was like, no, this guy should not be mixing. This guy should not be talking, should not be breathing. Whatever the case it is, hashtag potato. But you look at the, look at the industry, though, and, and you look at a lot of the DJs who are being hired to do different spots and every, you know, product reps and such for yeah. some of these businesses. Many of those those talents, we're going to call it, I'm going to use that uh, term kind of loosely, are, are uh, people that really are almost, if you know you know them and have met them, it's almost kind of embarrassing that they are working with some of these brands. And you know probably some that I'm thinking of right off the top of my head. Is Absolutely. that you're not hiring a, a, a little John who has a business mind and can understand what the heck's going on and what their role is and how to make the brand better. 
you've got somebody who's kind of washed up from whatever, whatever, and now they're up there making a fool of themselves, thinking that they're cool, and you know, you're not that guy anymore. You need to be doing what you do and do well because you're helping the brand, not doing whatever the heck you're doing, man. Oh, you're talking about that guy, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, the microphone cut off. Oh, there's man. a there's a couple of those guys in in a one, yeah. For that. <laughs> it's, I I just I I. I don't get in. I, I, I don't. And it happens all way too often. And I think it's not just the DJ conventions because I've done, you know, audio and AV for other types of conventions. Right. Uh, and there's always people that just like, okay, the seminar speaker should not be here, but it's always due to poor planning or people not vetting what the seminar speaker is going to be about. But I think the DJ industry is one of the few industries where somebody could say, well, this guy's an expert on so-and-so and every DJ will, uh, well, like pretty much accept it. You know, few people I'm talking about on that one. Uh, but uh, like, look, if you see somebody and you're going to take business advice from research them and make sure they're not an idiot. They're not a liar. They're not a crook. They haven't gone bankrupt or most importantly that they're still a freaking DJ. Okay. Yes. There's some business people that aren't DJs and they're giving out business advice. Brian Dodge being one of them, uh, you know, research Brian Dodge. The dude is a genius, right? I mean, we just talked about yep, that. He, he's been uh, at numerous shows that you and I've been to and he is, outside of the industry, but he is his sales knowledge and sales skills. And he uses that. I mean, it's not like, yes, some, some guys, as you were saying, Arnaldo, where they're, they used to be a DJ, they don't DJ anymore. And now here they are on a speaking circuit. And yet there's information we can learn from them, but there's only, there's also guys who are not DJing because they just don't have their businesses were basically going kapot. And now it's like, huh? Exactly. And, and I'm, not, I'm not talking like Mark Farrell because Mark Farrell really has never given biz or dj advice right correct now. he's he's he really goes and he's he 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 wanted to get the idea out i mean if, if people really go back to the initial message of mark farrell because we had this conversation actually yesterday with a, a guy mark farrell's message was the veggie platter we're worth more than a veggie platter because we can create memories that people will take with them no one's going to remember oh. the veggie platter that was construed and twisted around to basically be worth more than the veggie platter and that that people should be trying to keep the bride from buying the veggie platter and then and the chair covers and do this and that and the other thing you know it, it's more now granted the ironic part is mr farrell never actually told anybody how to sell your services so you can be worth more than the veggie platter but you know that's it it, it, it kind of put a little you know like Inkling, hey, I really should research how to be a better businessman. But yeah, Mark never done any seminars on being a DJ. So, but if you're there taking seminars from somebody on how to be a DJ and how to perform, and they haven't done a performance in ten years, really, like how do you how do you know what you're doing? How do you know you're keeping up? Oh, I only do you know five weddings a year. Okay, well then you have no idea what you're talking about. I don't care how much money you make per wedding because the performance. I'm sorry, if you're only doing five events a year because you only want to charge because you want to charge this much, that's fine. That makes a good business person, but I don't want to hear anything performance from you because five weddings a year, you're not going to be brushed up to what's the latest trend. Oh, Plain for sure. And I know a lot of people will disagree with me on this, but I'm going to tell you right now, take any of these DJs in the circuit courts that, or the DJ circuit speaking circuits, circuit courts, ah, same damn thing, that push the whole, you know, ah, make more money, do more this, do more that, but can you DJ? You know, you have Randy Barlow with the 1% DVDs are incredible DVDs, but those are not DJ DVDs. Those are wedding MC DVDs. Nothing in there is going to help you with the actual art of wiki, wiki, wiki. Yeah. It's, and I think Moby got that part right. That They really started pushing, you know, those turntable turntablism classes and everything else, but it's limited. It is so limited. That's the one part of the trade show that I think, you know, really does need to improve. Um, we really should talk about also about the exhibit floor because, oh, boy, have I got a rant on that one. We'll get, we'll get there. But let's, let's, oh, yeah. let's, let's talk um, about – let's keep going on that area, though, about yeah. – because this is something that we've talked about on other shows also, the idea that that Mobile Beat and, and really most of the DJ – I got a bug that's flying around there. A lot of the DJ conventions and even what we've done up here with our, our, hang, our meetups and such is really based to, towards the wedding DJ because that's what we a lot of us know. But Absolutely. But we're, we're talking a little s small component of the DJ industry. And, and Mobile Beat, you know, as you said, they had uh, the mixing classes. They had one company come in last year to do the mixing classes. They had another company come in this year and are trying to do that. And they brought in, uh, can't think of his name, uh, the big name, name DJ that had a half a room. Uh, Oakenfold. This, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that too. Yeah. So, so you're, they're trying to oh. do these things, but the problem was is that 
Arnold, will that audience, will that type of DJ invest the money to go to Las Vegas and sit in seminars? Or are they the guys that are going to go, if they go to Vegas, they are going to go to go hit the clubs to go try to learn style and, and performance by watching someone. If you're a turntablist, you're not going to be there for a turntablism class. It really isn't. It really came down to how can we take the crowd that's currently, uh, let's say Mulvey, right? How can we take the crowd that's going, that already attends Mulvey and, and win them back? And I keep telling them, guys, you keep trying to cater to the older DJs. No disrespect to the older DJs, but they already know where they want to go to Mulvey or not. Yep. We need, we need to cater to the younger crowds and everything else. And that is why with Master Schools Dance, School Dances, I'm very careful of where I speak now. I haven't spoken at School Dance Seminar at any convention in a long time because there isn't one convention worth a damn for DJs my age and younger that want to get into the circuit. Yep. Plain and simple. Yeah. You know, they keep pandering to the older DJs. And again, no disrespect to you guys out there, but you already know if you want to attend a convention and half of you think you can get nuggets in the hallway, but most of those nuggets are just turds. And that's a whole random we went on over the last show. But if you want to get the younger DJs, like you said, if you want to get the turntablist classes, you know, the turntable, we need to find the club guys and say, hey, look, you're, you're a great club DJ, but you need some business classes so you can make more money at the clubs. We need a Mark Farrell of clubs. We yeah. really do. And, and really underpay the DJs. And I think that type of a class would have to be, we, they, it would have to be done in New York. It would have to be done in these hot spots where you have numbers. I don't think getting those guys to fly to Vegas, while Vegas would be an appeal, I don't think the two are going to go together until they've. No, no. I, but at the same time, though, you, you know, you do have Moby. Moby did try with Jazzy Jeff, who did an incredible performance. Um, Paul Oakenfold was some interesting, but. The younger club DJs have no idea who the hell Paul Oakenfold is. And boy, let me tell you, you know, they say never meet your heroes. Well, never listen to him perform live either. That performance is absolute garbage. That was so freaking disappointing. Um, but we'll cover that later. Um, it, it, and at the same time, you know, you can't bring the younger DJ or the, you know, the newer DJs because they are super expensive. Half of them don't even freaking mix. You know, there was scribble at the Las Vegas DJ show. And, you know, I told Trax, I'm like, why? Why did he do the seminar that he did? I don't want to hear his life story. I want to hear Scribble talk about, you know, how he taught himself how to mix, uh, what his personal style of mixing, his philosophy. I want to hear the performance. I don't want to hear the business side of Scribble because Scribble was smart. When, you know, in the right time of his career, he knew where he wanted to go and he got a manager. Yeah. Mobile D you're not going to get a manager. So I don't want to freaking hear about business advice because you had a manager to do it. Now, of course, he did a lot of that himself too, but I want to hear the performance side of me. It's freaking DJ Scribble. I want to hear your philosophy on mixing. I want to hear, you know, your personal do's and don'ts. I want to improve my mixing. That is why I'm freaking listening to one of my favorite DJs. If I wanted business advice, I wouldn't go to a DJ. I'd go to Michael Port. Mm -hmm. Who, by the way, has not been to any damn seminar since yours, John, and I have no idea why. Oh, that's right, because all the money went to DiBiase. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand. It's like everybody's so freaking out of touch. I feel like we're watching different branches of government. It's like none of them can figure this out. Like, listen, just, just shut up. Listen to what the DJs are saying. Spend five minutes on Facebook. Moby has done that, and they're listening. Clearly, DJ Expo isn't at all because – does anybody actually remember what time DJ Expo is going to be? Because they wait to the last minute to actually announce it. They wait to the last minute for any kind of information. This year, they actually did announce it. And they had to because the Trump Hotel was shut down. But on that, you never knew. And there's no signs anywhere in DJ Expo. Like, you have no idea where anything is. It's, it's so freaking weird. But then you have shows like Robbie's. I have I've, I've not heard one negative thing yep. about Robbie's shows. Um, I know Midwest DJs, they've been working real hard, you know, with their lineup. I haven't heard anybody really complain about that. So perhaps the show of, or the age of the big shows is dying and we're going to see smaller, smaller DJ shows, which is going to kill the whole exhibit floor thing. Very much so. There's no way exhibitors are going to, going to be no. able to travel and do what they do. Now they Not can bring out to dealers, local dealers. But there's still a lot of money behind that. That's one of the things that, you know, I've kind of pushed with a few of the brands that I've worked with. Like, look, there are smaller shows out there. You're, you're not going to be able to sell as much. But if you're going to these shows to sell, you're going to be so disappointed. You know, like DJ Expo, yeah, that's a sell show. People yep. go in and buy stuff, but not a Vegas. And it's not because the shows in Vegas are lesser quality crowd. A lot of times the same crowd. But in Vegas, like, John, I spent about $1,000 just watching shows in Vegas this past week. Hmm. What do you do in Atlantic City? 
Um, what the hell is there to do in Atlantic City other than get a shit on by some nasty seagulls over by the boardwalk or Snooky? Same thing, really. I was going to say, yeah, it's, there's other things that'll do that to you there too. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I don't get it. I, 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 I don't understand like why people complain about Vegas. I'm like, look, it's not that the Vegas are big selling shows. They're never going to be because people are spending all their money in Vegas, but they're not spending in DJ Expo. Plus more DJs are driving to Expo. Your seminar was another. I actually remember buying stuff at your seminar. Yours was the one where I saw the bliss light. I'm like, oh, I gotta have this. Uh, and that was back when I couldn't afford lights at that point as I wanted to. But it's the thing that drove me nuts are the hypocrite DJs. And you might remember one that lives very close to you. His last name's a color. And he kept saying, oh, you know, you should be going to every DJ convention. Otherwise, you don't really support the industry. If you're a real businessman, you should be at a convention. Well, T, why the hell are you not at this jock or the Northern DJ convention when you're five minutes away? Yeah. And so many DJs do that crap. There's DJs in freaking uh, ADJA chapters or name chapters. You should be attending every single convention. How many of you attend it? Well, I attend one a year. Which one did you attend? I attended a local gathering. That's not a convention. Yeah, that's, that's a bunch of dudes wanting to get drunk and write it off as a business expense. Don't be a freaking hypocrite. But it's just like I tell you know DJs. Well, listen, if people are saying they don't have money for a school dance, it's not that they don't have the money to go to the school dance. They just don't see that school dance go- worth going to. Yeah. If if you're telling me you can't afford two hundred dollars for an air or for you know a convention ticket, maybe three or four hundred for the airline. And, you know, a few bucks a day, you can get in and out fairly cheap. You can eat cheap in Vegas. I don't care what it says. You can really eat cheap in Vegas. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee is the most expensive city I've ever been in for a convention. Vegas is cheap compared to Nashville. No one no one says you have to go to have the $50 buffet in Vegas. No one said you had to do that. I mean, exactly. when Lori and I are traveling and such, you know what? There's nothing wrong with bringing a, a couple of breakfast bars for your mornings. You're not spending $20 on a a. You can do things like that. It's possible, but it's just interesting. These the guys who will be like, "Oh, we're gonna stay. We're gonna stay at this hotel over here," which is you know the whole not being in the host hotel is another another issue with shows. But we're gonna stay at this cheap hotel over here, and yep. then we're going to go dump one hundred and fifty dollars on a, a bottle service or something at a uh, at a club, so we can you know drink until three or four in the morning, and then try to get to seminars the next day. And oh, I'm so hungover. Yeah, what, yeah. that's. That's, I think, what conventions should stop, period, our DJ parties. Um, I, I've witched and bitched and just moaned and nagged about this multiple times, so I don't think this is going to surprise anybody. There is no more boring of a party than a bunch of DJs hanging out. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an idea of what a DJ party is. With This is what they look like. That's it. That's it. It is. It is the literal definition of a sausage fest. Uh, Whoever's on stage, that's all you see is the guy's head behind in front of you and their cell phone as they're recording whatever's happening up on the stage. My, okay, I'm going to pick on each individual show because I've gone to all the parties, right? Um, I will give credit to Drax that he said, screw doing a DJ party at the actual convention. I'm just going to get a deal with a nightclub and you guys do your thing there. And people will have fun if they're nightclub people. I'm mm-hmm. not a nightclub person, so I'm bored of freaking theaters. I don't care how epic you call the party. I'm not a nightclub person. But I know a lot of guys had fun there. But that's not really a DJ party. That's, that's a smart way of calling it a DJ party, but it's not. It's yep. not at all related to the convention in that sense that it's at a club, which is fine. It works out. Then you have Mobile Beat. My first Mobile Beat, actually my second Mobile Beat, I think, there was the 80s party and I had some DJ just doing these corny ass dances and four dudes out on the dance floor and that was it. I'm like, what is this? What seventh layer of hell is... (laughs) Did I kill somebody and forget about it and then suddenly die and now I'm just waiting for Satan to poke me with his pitchfork? This is just awful. They've gotten better because Mobile Beat killed those parties and now it's like trivia and hanging out but apparently carvin needs to bring 20 million freaking speakers for trivia for 20 people and i can hear you five floors up that that was insane there was no reason for that and they wanted to bring more apparently and i'm, I'm glad ryan's like mm, no guy then you have dj expo now dj expo that is the number one source of false advertising our DJ party is at scores like <laughs> All right, boom, boom. Nope. What they do is they tell all the strippers, ladies, go home. There's just going to be a bunch of DJs here and they're DJs, so they are broke. Yeah, they're going to, they don't know what a dollar bill is. 
<laughs> nope. Jimmy said a wadded up dollar bill. No, most of them don't have a wadded up dollar bill. If they didn't have a credit card, they wouldn't get anywhere. <sighs> yeah, it's so. <laughs> so I, we you know we we walked by. It's like so you know a bunch of guys came out of scores. I'm like, so how's the party? And I was like, is it good? And they're like, no, nah, it's just a bunch of guys just kind of like weird dancing. Like, where's the strippers? Like, well, there's one, but she's not a stripper. And also, it's not a girl. I'm like, <laughs> That's you know. what the hell is it? What? <laughs> What's left? <laughs> Listen, the most epic party happens at In and Out Burger, and that's where the one guy thinks he can eat four double doubles. It's usually me. And sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not, sometimes I'm in the toilet. That to me is the epic DJ party. These things are so boring. Cut that crap out and, and let's do something else, right? I, I, I want to see some more round, maybe roundtable discussions. That's a good place to do panels. If you're going to do panels, do it at the pre-show. Don't do it in the actual meat and potatoes part of the show. I, I don't get that part. Um, if you're going to have seminars early in the morning, hey, could you not put the seminar speaker right next to a freaking speaker company that's doing demos the entire time. So you really can't hear the seminar because if that was annoying to me as a speaker, I can't even imagine what it is for somebody that actually paid to hear the seminar, but instead you're just hearing <laughs> the entire time. Uh, I don't get it. It's like, do, do, do the people and I, I'm not talking about Moby or DJX, but just in general, do the people that make these conventions not actually attend their own damn conventions and say, huh, that was probably a bad idea. You know, there's an air wall there. I wonder how much of that base that air wall is going to be able to block. Yeah. Oh, it'll block enough. Yeah. Arnaldo, he could talk loud. Go ahead. Do it. Man, man, I just... However, you know, there were some positives. Uh, DJ Takeover was insanely successful. Mm -hmm. And I have a tip on how to make the DJ Takeover even better. Ooh. You ready for this tip? I, 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 I am sitting. All right, everybody, if you guys want to go write this down, and when Ryan sends you the surveys, you need to write this in. Stop letting Keith Shockley anywhere near mobile beat. Let me make that very clear while I look at the camera. That guy is a tool. He's drunk half the times. He has no business being on the microphone. Holy crap. I am so glad I did not do the DJ takeover. So Jay Klein and Bill Jacob both contacted me. I'm like, you know what? I think that'll be fun. You know, it's it's nothing but an ego stroke. And listen, I am about four ego points short of becoming, you know, that orange guy. Lock them up. So <laughs> then we're going to offend the alt right. <laughs> I don't like, think we've hit Canada yet, but we're still, the night's still young. We still have another 25 minutes. <laughs> the Canadians, they're laughing with their health care. So it's all good. So, no, usually I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll do it. And then, I don't know, part of me is like, you know, I'm going to be so busy and I'm going to be helping set up, you know, different stuff of the show and catching up with friends. I'm just not going to do it because I'm going to be stuck in there till all hours of the night. Right. Plus, I, I was remembering the disaster from last year. So, which the disaster was nobody's fault except some drunk ass DJ. But that's a whole different uh, part. So, everything actually went really good, John. Uh, the music was tolerable. It was inside this time as it should have been. Nice. It was good. And... This time, the DJs that were there actually understood that you shouldn't be in the red. Like, whoa. You know, Ken Heath was running the audio, and even he's like, yeah, it's like, this was good. It was actually not the whole red lining the whole time. Then, uh, what I forgot, my goodness. Uh, was it Dana, I think? DJ Dana? Maybe that's one. Uh, blonde girl? So, yeah. Yep. Blonde girl? Okay. I think it was her that was mixing. And, you know, she was doing good. She was getting, I think it was her. The crowd was all vibing. Here comes Keith Shockley. With the faders, gets on her board, turns down her faders so we can. I don't know what that he was saying. I don't think anybody knew what he was saying. I don't think he knew what he was saying. I don't think Jesus Christ knew what he was saying. Let me tell you something. I don't care who you are. You touch my mixer, you go and get cut. I say shop, but this is Vegas, and you know, actually, I don't know if you can exactly. I think I don't know. The shit you made out of the soap in the shower this morning, in the morning. That's what you're gonna use. Yeah, you you finna you finna get stabbed. I'm, I'm, if I have no weapon, I'm gonna get a lot of butter, put it in a sock. Don't touch a DJ's mix. I don't care who the hell you are. Listen, no, no. So he goes and does that. I'm like, what the, what the fuck are you doing? Multiple times, and he won't get off the mic. And you just see the crowd like they stop every time he gets on. Not because they want to hear Keith Shockley, but because the dude won't shut up. It, it annoys the hell out of me. It's like the late night radio DJ and then has the one MC that has to say something just so at least he collects a paycheck but doesn't understand that you can just say one thing and that's just any other radio station then shut the hell up. 
It's called the DJ takeover, not the Keith Shockley takeover. So either get rid of Keith Shockley or call it the Keith Shockley interrupts of other DJs. <laughs> then DJ Hollywood comes in. I guess he's a friend of Jay Klein's. Dude freaking killed it. Just straight up. I'm going to tell you right now, move Paul Oakenfold out of the way. They should have put Hollywood up on the main stage. This guy was awesome. John, he just like does old school slam, like just mix after mix after mix. Bringing him back these old hits that I haven't heard in a while. And he actually beat mix. He actually live mixed. He actually did live transitions. He wasn't relying on DJ City the entire time. So you're saying Oakenfold didn't? I'm not saying he didn't, but we'll, we'll go over that in a second. Because <laughs> I, ah. So anyhow, the... Keith Shockley goes, and you can see where he tries to touch the mixer. <laughs> Here comes oh, uh, Hollywood's hand. No. <laughs> 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 so, you know, there he's mixing. Shockley comes in. Nope, oh, back to you. <laughs> he just has his back to Keith Shockley the whole time so he can't get in there. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he was driving me up a wall. I'm sure, I'm sure Keith Shockley's a nice guy, but he needs to not drink and be on the microphone. And it's not about him. He clearly doesn't understand that. But that being said, Oakenfold, I was so excited and disappointed at the same time. I mean, it's freaking Oakenfold, right? And most people pretend they knew who Oakenfold is, and they really have no idea. Uh, I, I had one DJ like, yeah, that's the guy that sang Starry Art Surprise. No, no, no. Producer, he didn't sing. That was, shelf, uh, what's it called? Shifty Shell Shock from Crazy Town. Remember, come, come, my lady, you're my mm -hmm, butterfly. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, the EV, you know, they had their massive rig. Uh, very, actually, I think it was pretty much the same rig that they had used at the LMFAO or the Red Food concert. Yeah. Which was, right? You had the ETX 18 SPs. You had the 35s, which, oh, my God, those 35s are incredible. It sounded great. You know, I got to hear a little bit of it when they were doing a sound check. And, I mean, come on. It's, it's Mike Dusso. It's the EV guys. It was going to sound good no matter what. right? You could fart on it, and it would sound heavenly because, well, it's EV. And a lot of people said, well, it was, huh? That's a you right? get a t-shirt made, yeah. You, yeah. Even a fart sounds good with EV. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so a bunch of DJs are like, man, this sounds like an ass. Like it's distorting. Or, you know, What's wrong with the EVs? And I kept telling the guys that I talked to, I'm like, no, it wasn't the EVs. It wasn't the sound guy's fault. You see, guys, when you're a DJ and you have a mixer, and you're feeding out of your mixer into another mixer, like your main mixing board. You need to make sure your mixer is down. Your little mixer has these little knobs. There's a volume fader, a gain knob. And if they're all the way up, you're a fucking idiot. And I think that's exactly what happened. Because I actually got to hang out in the front of house. I mean, you know, Evie, they're really nice. <laughs> they're like, yeah, you can out here get a few photos. I appreciate them for that. And you could actually see the incoming signal in before it hits the processing equipment, anything. The incoming signal was solid red. There wasn't even like, you know, where most DJs like just red the entire time. You just see like a little flicker. No, it was just solid red. Oh, jeez. It was like one of those uh, cartoons, you know, like where Bugs Bunny gets really, really sick and he puts a large thermometer and goes, Whoop, and then it hits the top of the glass and the mercury just flies out. Yep. That's exactly what would have happened. If it, if it was physically possible, there is no way you could have cleaned that sound up and, and you could hear the, you know, I don't know if it was one of the EV guys or Moly, but you could hear somebody like, yo, somebody needs to get them to turn it down. And you could, where they tell them to turn it down, it just turns it back up. I don't understand it. Like, is Paul Oakenfold Ken, Helen Keller? Can, can he Maybe he's the Beethoven of DJs. And that's what I'm thinking. That's what I told him. I was like, well, see, Paul Oakenfold is the uh, Beethoven of DJs. He's just, you know, looking at the waveform, Serato face now because he can't hear because he's been redlining his whole I, – I don't understand it. I, so for those of you guys that were there, no, it was not Evie. Evie has incredible sound. If it didn't, I wouldn't use it. John, I know that you use yep. Evie well. They sound great. Yes. They stand behind their products. However, there is a subtle commercial in that. Most speakers would have caught fire with that much distortion. And the EVs – took it they took it like a champ so yeah so kudos on ev on that but there's only so much you can do um yeah that was really the, the biggest complaint jason janai killed it i mean it's, it's jason janai uh freedom williams is there most people are excited about freedom williams but if you guys know the history of csc the music factory you know the freedom williams is a sack of crap i mean he is 
he's not a nice person. He took advantage of people. He that's not his song. That's not his group. Just go look up the history behind Freedom. So, so let me ask you now. I, I was there when Freedom was there last time, and he was the guy that got up on stage, and it was like f bomb, f bomb, f bomb. And he was up there with a bottle of Windsor, and I think he polished off half the bottle of Windsor during his performance. And and that wasn't including what he came drinking as he came in to the yep. uh, green room that night. And then I think before he left, he had finished this this liter bottle of Windsor, whatever it was. How was he this time? Uh, well, he was sober. He did oh. a ball stage. He didn't throw alcohol, at least that I could see. He did complain a lot. They asked him to be sober during the show, which I'm like, holy crap, you are the definition of unprofessional. Freedom Williams was not the highlight of the show. It was whatever girl, and I, I, I swear – it's one of the girls from the Weather Girls, and she just lost a lot of weight because it sounded just like her. Hmm. If you guys know the story about, you know, uh, everybody dance now, the girl that's in the video is not the girl singing. It was one of the Weather Girls, and they say, oh, you're too heavy to be on TV, so they put somebody else. It sounds like crap, but that's the truth, and that's why I personally hate seeing the music factory and everybody involved in it because I think they did her dirty. The girl that was singing there, John, she, she killed it. Wow. And nobody was paying attention to Freedom Williams, in my opinion. Like, this girl, every time she sang, people were just freaking out. She did such a great job. Um, and, and again, Jason, you know, absolutely killed it. Uh, Jason Janai's performance is a seminar in itself. You should be taking notes on how this guy's mixing, getting the crowd hyped up. But he was in the center of the show. He was off to the side, and he commanded that stage. You know when Freedom Williams was there? Jason commanded that stage. He just has that presence of, about him. Um, I know it's not a man crush on Jason Jana, but I think every DJ knows they want to be SCE when they grow up. You know, I really think that's a fair statement. Uh, I'm, my wife and I are so pissed off because we had a bad dining experience with one of our, actually one of our more favorite restaurants at the Tropicana. And while they were taking their sweet freaking time to fix it, we missed the fact that Montel Jordan was there and he actually performed. Because remember the first year he didn't want to do this is how we do it. Yep. And now he's like, yeah, I'll perform. This is how we do it. I'm like, fantastic. Uh, but yeah, we, we missed it. And now my wife is mad at me. <sighs> you were so close. Yeah. I was like, damn it. That's just a fun song. But, but yeah, I mean, that's really it. Um, did, I, did I miss anything? No, I think we've covered, we've covered a lot. I'm just following the chats and such here. And, and uh, yeah, looks like, it looks like they're following, uh, following along and such well with, with, so. I uh, see people uh, talking. Yeah, that she was amazing. I don't know who she was. Can somebody, and I got a photo with her just because I'm like, listen, you were absolutely incredible. Like this girl really was damn good. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and it's crazy because, you know, that point, that's how you could tell it wasn't the EVs because that set was louder than Oakenfold set, but it was clear because again, Jason Jana knows how to freaking set uh, levels. Can, can somebody just do a seminar on how to set levels and stop with the fuckery? Because I, I don't get it. By now you think one of these conventions would actually have a, how to set your uh, game, which you got uh, that. That's that session's done at the audio symposium with Ben Stowe. Ben will teach how to do that. Yeah, I know that, um, oh my goodness, uh, Jonathan uh, Novick, you know, he, yeah. he was a sawdust on DJ Chat. He did one on like subwoofer placement, all that. Oh, there's a great seminar. I want to see more stuff like that. You know, I want to see more. Tech. That's why I do work hard to do technical seminars because there just really aren't any of them. Um, the exhibit hall for all these trade shows, like I saw the, uh, you know, you were at the photo booth expo. I'm watching yeah. all the live screens. My goodness, the DJ industry is a freaking joke. Compared to like the freaking photo booth expo, like how many backdrops you really need to look at, but here they all are proudly showing their stuff. And I'm not saying the vendors weren't, but you could tell there was a difference. And it's not that the vendors at the DJ conventions don't care anymore because, you know, I, I was there with American DJ and I know that they were working hard to put on a great trade show, but the money isn't flowing in for these trade shows. It's really yep. hard to pour money into it. At the photo booth expo, I'm hearing people, people buying and, you know, some of these vendors just making bank at these shows. And that one was in Vegas. So maybe my Vegas theory might not be 100% true there. But I think also part of it is that, um, well, John, I wasn't there. Let me ask you, was, was there a big giant speaker company in the middle of the trade show room that sounded like EV? Not EV. Um, We'll just say it sounds like peeve and has a Y in the end that was so freaking loud that you couldn't even talk to somebody on the other side of the trade show room. Or quiet. No, unfortunately there wasn't, there wasn't anyone that was super, super loud. There wasn't anyone who, who uh, 
had a celebrity in their booth and had a line that was blocking the next five booths around them, that which you know we both have, have seen. Oh yeah. Um, people were respectful of of each other's space at the show, which was really really kind of interesting. You didn't have so many of those little nuances that we just get you see at these other trade shows, and it's like, wow, this was really really cool. Yeah. So why can't DJ conventions be like that? You know, I was so excited when I looked at the Moldy trade show or uh, trade show exhibit. I call it trade show, but the yep. exhibit plan and EV, you know, they're always in their own area, but it doesn't matter because even when EV was in the middle of the trade show room, they actually built like a whole soundproof area. DJ Expo last year, they had their own yeah. little uh, double walled room that they built. Dude, I was so nervous. I'm like, because I went up to Mike. I'm like, you got all these freaking speakers and we're right across because you're not going to hear us. And I mean, those things really did a good job absorbing yeah. as much as they could because, boy, those subs will hit when you run them at the same time. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, Carver was in another room. QSC was in another room. DOS Audio was there, but they were way on the other side. So I'm like, okay, they're not really going to affect too many people. And the guys at DAS, on DAS, DOS, whatever you want to call it, they understand that they're not there to blast everybody out. People know DAS, like if they want to crank it up. But yeah, here's a speaker company in the middle of the trade show. And I'll tell you what, they kind of created peace in the Middle East in the sense that the major lighting companies all agreed on one thing, and that's that that speaker company needed to go. (laughs) They were so freaking loud. Like, here's us. Here's a speaker company. Here's our competitor. So let me just ask her, right? Here's ADJ. Here's Chave, right? Here's that speaker company. Um, Here's Mark Lighting on this side. I mean, we're all being freaking blasted. I mean, you know, we're, we're doing like live learning seminars and announcing contests. And I knew that I was blasting uh, Chave out because their speakers were pretty much pointed that way because for some reason we're right in the very front, whichever, you know, worked out in the end. But, you know, I went over and I talked to a couple of the guys, you know, Jeff, uh, and I'm like, Jeff, listen, if I blast you out, I'm so sorry. because, <laughs> And he goes, yeah, I totally get it. So, you know, we were able to kind of work around each other in that. But. I went over to just go do, you know, uh, a couple of videos. And I don't know if you noticed, I posted no videos of Moby at no, all. No, we didn't see much of anything from you. Yeah. And part of the reason is because I couldn't pick anything up. It was just. <laughs> and then Keith Shockley got on. I'm like, what the hell? It, it finally got quiet. And then here. I'm like, what the hell is that? Oh, God. And then here. Yeah. Boy, no, that's the wrong. That's the wrong hype. But you get my point. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that last part wasn't. I can go up there. Yeah, through. boy. I'm like, it was so freaking loud. It was obnoxious. There was nobody even there. And Jeremy was the only person actually able to give videos because he had that really fancy mic that you use. And even he said that he was having a hard time because of this speaker company just blasting everybody out. You could be on the other side. You could even be outside and you would just hear them. And I kept going up to uh, Mike Jr., you know, who's pretty much running security. I'm like, okay, you hear that bass? He goes, yeah, I'm like, that's them. And then they won't turn it down. And they went over the meter. And as soon as they walked away, the sound went back. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm like, this is ridiculous. So what the hell is the point of enforcing the, if you don't turn it down, we're going to unplug you if you're not going to enforce it. Because now I'm having to turn my stuff up, not because I want to be disrespectful to the other lighting companies, despite of what other people may think. No, I don't play that game. That's dirty. So I have to turn my stuff up. Of course, they got to turn their stuff up. And then other people are turning their stuff up. Now it suddenly gets real loud because of one asshole that doesn't know how to turn it down. There was nobody at their booth. And why? Because as soon as you walked in, you got blasted. Like... I don't get it. There was no need for that. It was not enjoyable. I did not want to be in that trade or that ex- exhibit floor half the times because it was so loud. I can't yep. even imagine what a customer, like I had to be there. You know, I mean, ADJ brought me out for the seminar. They asked me to be it. Of course, I'm going to be there. You know, I'm going to do my best to answer everybody's questions. I did not want to be there because it was so loud. So I had my, um, this thing over here. I freaking love this thing, right? And I had this on half the time. And that way I could at least, you know, not be blasted out so i just told people here talking to this ear so i can somewhat hear you i can't even imagine if you're the end user like why would you want to stay in that exhibit hall for more than five minutes it was not enjoyable it was louder than dj expo john wow that says something Jeez, holy cats it was uncomfortable and in the middle of my freaking seminar some other speaker company starts cranking their shit up like here's it was not supposed to be any speakers sponsored seminars that was supposed to be close to the users while seminars are going on, but nope, couldn't do anything because somebody had to keep cranking their stuff up. These speaker companies need to understand that not every, you know, they have to follow rules just like everybody else does. 
but the my seminar, I know the Boom Entertainment was on the other side of me. I know their seminar thing got interrupted once because of the base. Now they were in a bigger room, so I don't think it did it as bad as mine, but I, I, I don't get it. The speaker companies need to be in a whole different area altogether. Away. Yeah, very much so. Uh, uh, yeah, your, that, your place just won't get you there. Yeah, with the exception of Evie and Yamaha. You know, my, Yamaha wasn't there this year, but Yamaha always keeps it respectful. EV always keeps it respectful. DAS was, you know, playing music the whole time, but it wasn't loud. And we went over and made the joke, like, congratulations on being the only speaker company out here in the showroom that isn't cranking it up. Mm -hmm. you know, American Audio, American Audio doesn't, you know, cater towards the high, high volume speaker. It's just, you know, good speaker at affordable price. So they don't need to crank it up. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't need to work like that, but I, I don't get it. I, I, and I wasn't the, like, I wasn't the only one that was complaining about it, but I think I was the loudest complainer. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done being quiet about this. This is bullshit. And other people are going to know that this is bullshit. I'm going to let everybody know this is bull. The moment that my seminar got interrupted because some asshole can't turn their, their system down, like that's insane. And in the middle of my seminar, I'm texting the people with Moby like, this needs to stop right now. So if you guys watch the live stream of my seminar, you're actually going to see where I stop the first time. And I tell my wife, let's cover up the logo of my shirt. This isn't an ADJ sponsored part, but please go tell them at STFU. Now this is the sponsor. <laughs> <No. laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get it. And I know that was one of the things that I liked about your show. And I was compared it back to yours. Like, I don't remember being blasted out by a speaker company in the middle of a seminar that, you know, mm -hmm. was listening or in the middle of the trade show room. But you do remember the, and this is back when Evie came out with the Dynacord. Yes. Oh man. Oh crazy. yeah. And those Dynacord, they made those things rock, but they were done at the appropriate time. They did. You know, it, it, it came in and that was one of the things that actually sold me on that system. And I never bought it. I don't know why. Oh, that's right. Cause I didn't have money that point. No, but not, not for that, that, that amount. Those things were not cheap, but I remember when you had them cranked up and I mean, they sounded good. And then it came down for the meeting and it really showed. It doesn't matter the volume, the day sounded good. It was done the right way. And again, the guys at EV understand that the show doesn't need to be about them because I don't care the volume that you can crank it up and I want to care how it sounds in multiple levels. And I yep. got that. It, it seems that it doesn't, uh, doesn't really pick up that way anymore. Blake Whiting wants to know who was it? Screw it. John, can I say it? I, I mean, it. they've been talking about it up, up above. Huh? They've been mentioning names up above and they mentioned it. Robin's mentioned it. Uh, okay. Yeah. It, it guys, it's, uh, it starts with a P and ends with an S and it sounds like I can't say Evie because it's not EV. We all know it's not. Boss. It rhymes. It, yeah, it rhymes with it rhymes with EV. The uh, yeah, it the, the Pokemon the character. It rhymes with it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So I'm, I'm telling you, it's just. But but yeah. Uh, as usual, there were a million tr uh, photo booths at Mobile Beach. Uh, I still think Steve Lynch is, or is it just has the best presentation out of everybody. Joe Bunn was there with his like his real cool all in one type booth. Yeah, yeah, really pretty custom design. Um, I'm still always impressed by Jim from Colorado Sound and Light. Jim's just uh, a know, fiddler. He, he is. He, he's gonna. There's something he'll he'll just figure a way to make it a little bit better or to make a little bit different version of it and. I mean, I'm very much against do it yourself stuff, but Jim is licensed. He's insured. He knows his stuff. I, yeah. I just like talking to Jim. You know, he's always thinking ahead. He's always trying to do stuff. I, I actually have one of his old fixtures to this day. It still freaking works. Yeah. It was like the old eight little pin spot, and it had like the controller it, built in. You put the box in a stand, you crank it up, and it's ready to go. Aircraft lighting. Yep. yep. Yeah. I mean, it's. <laughs> It, they're cool. I, I, I love Colorado Sound and Light. Jim does some really, really, really cool things. Mm -hmm. So major props to Jim on that. Um, I'm trying to think. V Moda was there with, of all people, Roland. Yes. Cause I think they didn't they weren't they purchased by in music? No, V Moda's with somebody now. Somebody purchased them. I don't know if they did or not, but no, what, they they're tied in with somebody different now. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, so, I mean, either way, they were there, and Roland had a great-looking booth. Um, and music, you know, awesome uh, awesome presentation in general. They really had a nice, spacious area where you could listen to everything ahead of time, uh, play with it, you know, I mean, much more interactive than I've seen in the past. Same thing with, you know, Pioneer. I mean, they always go all out. They kept their booth simple because, I mean, it's it's Moby. It's not DJ Expo where people are buying just stuff left and right, but they were there. Obviously, I'm going to say good things about ADJ, but that's because – Hey, you know, aside from the fact that I'm there, I do love their products. I love the fact that Edgar came up with a booth design. 
didn't take a million and a half hours to set up. So yay. <laughs> we were not the last ones out of there. So that was awesome. Uh, but they really took a lot of input from their customers. I think everybody, most vendors seem to have taken a lot of input from their customers. Nice what to do it'd be nice if dreage didn't bring our stuff you know five hours late that, that would be nice i've heard yeah i've heard i've heard quite a few horror stories about uh the dreage well, and two, cost two, two freaking forklifts one scale they take breaks you know obviously because they're a union they have to wear even if they didn't want to which i mean really and then the guy one of the guys that's driving the forklift i swear to you was drunk like how hard is it to not run into things and then the, <laughs> it was a booth there was a booth. They don't sell trussing, so it's okay for us to say this. Their truss, when they set up, was curved, and there was no weight on it. And I, I knew exactly whose truss that was. I'm like, wow, check out that. Uh, let's order everything direct from China without any specking whatsoever with you know, deflection with zero weight on it. That's great. I mean, we were laughing about that left and right. I don't know if, uh, if Jeremy told you about that. No, but I haven't. Heard. That was funny to watch. Um, it, it was... It was, it was a better show floor this year than any other year that I've seen a movie in a long time, except for the fact that it was too loud. If that company had not been there at all, like if they were in a different area and yeah. they could crank away to their heart's content, I think it would have been 10 times more uh, or 10 times more of a show. This time, believe it or not, the dealers actually came up with better than just, you know, the same price that you can get if you call them directly. Yep. Like I was there with Canal and... Uh, Jeff would can tell me he was ready to sell stuff. Like, I mean, he, he actually got, gave people prices better than what I can even get half the times. And John, you, it's no secret that reviewers, we don't get stuff for free at all. Guys, I'll tell you, I wish we don't get stuff for free, but you know, we can get industry accommodation. Yep. You no. Know? And I mean, that's, that's not, everybody knows about that. Um, with some companies, but he was giving up prices that even better than I could get half the times. You know, and this wasn't just uh, them. IDJ now was there and uh, they had some price. I'm like, listen, we're, we're going to talk afterwards because I want to order some stuff. Like they had good pricing there. There were a couple of photo booth companies with some killer pricing. I mean, in general, this was a better show in terms of pricing than before. Yeah. That was, but it was all screwed up because that one company would not shut the heck up. Yeah. I really killed so many sales. So I don't want to be negative about it, but that's just the honest truth. Yeah, exactly. And then those things, those things happen. Unfortunately, we've been at, uh, expo and it's happened there and you just you'd hope eventually though that and it was nice that there was only one company because you've been you and i've been to shows where it's been three or four companies in the same room when you had this and this one and these two over here and everyone's banging and blaring and uh it is and it's you know uh, on, when you're in the showroom or you know the show floor you have to be professional you don't want to say anything negative about anybody but it's hard it's hard to tell somebody, listen, I know you just asked me a really important question about my seminar or some lighting that you saw, but I can't answer your question because I can't hear Jack Diddley squat. Like, how do you say that and stay professional? I'm sorry. I'm deaf. No, I'm sorry. I can't hear you because they won't turn it down. Yeah. Jack Diddley squat is not considered a professional phrase. I'm just saying. That was a much nicer phrase than what I really wanted. I, I kind of figured that, but I wanted to make point yeah, I was that. working real hard on that one. You know, you cleaned it up so we wouldn't offend those Canadians because we haven't offended them yet. So I'm pretty happy about that. Oh, no, no, no. It's, uh... No, however, my hearing does hurt. So I'm thinking about jumping over their border to get you know my hearing fixed for free. So There you go. Now that's just going to – there you go. That healthcare little thing. <laughs> Can you really make an offensive joke about excellent healthcare? Like, and I love all the people that are like, well, you know, if you talk to anybody from Canada, you would know they're, they're they have a mess up there, really, because I have a lot of Canadian friends. And you know what they tell me? You can keep your crappy insurance because we're OK over here. When my wife went through and I don't want to get too political, but I just love like DJs. You guys are great because when my wife went through the whole thing with her back, you know, you could just jump over the border or stay at my house for a couple of weeks and get her surgery. And I seriously consider that. <laughs> Well, there was a couple of things that would probably get us arrested. So I'm like, crap, I guess you can't just jump over the border for that. So, <laughs> plus, they have a wall. Um, it's not a very effective wall. But they do <laughs> yeah, it's called, a, called a winter. But. All right, no, we got to wrap things up, my friend. It is, it is 25 after. We'll be back here in just a few minutes with our second show. We've got Brandon uh, coming in, and he's going to be showing us how to get started doing an iPad photo booth. That should be interesting tonight. You know, I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm such a huge like Apple geek, believe it or not. Um, most people don't know that. No. And yeah. 
And I actually have no idea how to do the iPad. For like, I can imagine, like, I hadn't even had a chance to look into it. So, so that should be good. Yeah, That'll be so fun. looking forward to that. So once again, Arnaldo, thank you very much. We'll be back here in about five minutes, gang. And you can check in the description for the video link for the next show. Bye-bye. And hit subscribe and the like button and share with your friends. Oh, <laughs>